Hey, how's it going? And welcome along. I'm Rory from Ramatime, and welcome to Satisfactory Version 1.0. This is episode no episode 12. <laughs> I nearly said 11. I'm going crazy. Welcome back to the video. It's great to have you back. I'm really, really enjoying this series. I don't know about you. If you haven't seen what we've been doing, it's a kind of slow playthrough where we are slowly building up to what could be considered a mega base. It does look pretty nifty, but it's still got a long way to go. Each episode, we're we're doing uh, a little bit more, just chipping away. We're not in a hurry. It's very relaxed, as relaxed as my hyperactivity will allow anyway. We're, we're, we're having fun. So let's get started. Yeah, if you haven't seen any of the previous episodes, it's well worth having a look back. We've, we've got um, obviously quite a few to get to this point. It's been quite a fun little journey. Um, playing through Satisfactory to get to here. So I will recommend checking out some of the older videos if you haven't seen them. Here is our copper factory that we built in the last episode. And this is giving me my three main ingredients to go into the main base here. Not anything super special, but it's kind of interesting. It's a slightly different approach than usual. And it gives me the, uh, the sheets, the cable, and the wire. And these are all being put into these three tractors. They're not tractors, they're trucks here. And they will take them across this new crazy road that I've been working on, which is all still in progress, but will look really cool. See, the trucks will come up here and then they will be able to go into one of these five truck stops where that will then take the, the items and place them in the bin for my beautiful storage area up here. Now, one of the issues was there's no fuel for any of those truck stops because there's not really any coal nearby and I haven't got any coming in. So I've done something. The heavy residue oil that I'm having brought over from the plastics factory via the train is getting turned into fuel and I'm doing a sneaky. I'm sneakily taking out some of the uh, plastic and sending it under the ground so that the fuel is made and put into this packager. The plastic gets turned into, what are these called, canisters? And then that becomes packaged fuel. And it's still a job to do, but I need to run that over to my truck stop, which is, yeah, over there. So lots to do. And yeah, if you are new to the series, get used to the fact that I will prefix almost every statement with, I haven't finished dressing this yet. I'm still working on this bit. This bit isn't finished yet. So yeah, I will be saying stuff like that a lot. You'll get used to it, I'm sure. But before we get too dug in, I wanted to say about something. So my little factory down there is called uh, Lay It, Love It Limited. And I suggested that people come up with um, suggestions for the factory names. And we've had a few. It's uh, lovely that, that people are commenting and I'm, I'm noting some down that I'm going to use here and there. But there was one that got me because it just made me laugh. Now Josh Berry 245 suggested plating with my rods, but I misread it. So my factory is now called Plate My Rods. <laughs> It's fine. It's fine because I think that's just as funny. But thank you very much, Josh Berry. That's uh, that's a great suggestion. It makes me chuckle every time I look up there and see plate my rods. Now we do have something interesting to do, which is we've got to record all of these trucks. Um, now I've already done a couple of them, but this one here, which is collecting, I think it's the copper wire, right? We need to record it. So if you haven't seen the whole recording thing, it's really good because it's very very easy to use. We simply Press start recording. Just wait a moment so that there's a pause node and then pull away. Basically, if you go fast, the truck will go fast. If you go slow, the truck will go slow. It's simple, right? It's a good idea to go quite slow when you're coming up to corners and bends. Otherwise, whenever you're near the truck, it will constantly derail itself. If you're not near the truck, it actually just magically does its thing. It's, again, very, very clever how it all works. So, for example, here, I just like to slow down a little bit and, uh, yeah, let it uh, let it make a few more nodes than it needs to and it will just keep it nice and smooth when you're in the area. But here you can see this is what I've come up with. Again, it's all just blocked out for now. It needs to be made nice. We turn around here. We'll put this guy in the third one. So he comes here, goes along. And then he's going to pull into this one. I'm nice and slow here because we don't want it overrunning. And then we're going to sit there for a minute. We'll let it create a pause node. And then we'll pull away. And we're going to go off to the right. Nice and slow. Create loads of nodes. 
and then we turn away. And now the reason I'm doing this is because of the turning circles. I was having trouble when I was first playing around. It was just taking up so much space just to make a turning circle. Now we come down here, come down here. And this is one where you definitely want to be going slowly. Look at that, look how close is that, that's great. I'm gonna put a, a, an opening gate there. Hello, I lost it then. So that, uh, yeah, it goes in and out of a gate there because that should look cool. And we're gonna come down here and then again, down there was just a little bit too tight. I didn't want the trucks um, hitting one another. So we actually go off this way, and that's what this bit of uh, road is all about. Go down here again, nice and slow on the turning. Now we could hammer it down this nice hill, but very likely we'll launch off the end. So we won't do that, we'll, we'll come nice and easy. There we go, lovely job. We'll turn there as well. And there we go. Now we're on the home straight, ready to get back to uh, the collection point. And again, with the uh, with the um, you know the root waypoint marking, very easy. All you got to do is complete the route. So we just drive into there, and boom, that's recorded. So I'm just going to move him out of the way and jump out because we have a pause node here, and I'm going to come in. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to make that 10 seconds just because we're not in a hurry. And I'm also going to do that at the other end as well. That's picked up 7.5 seconds, but we'll make that 10 just to keep it nice and tidy. And that just means it will wait there 10 seconds before driving off again. Again, I don't want them all rushing around, whizzing in and out. I want plenty of time for them just to sort of sit, chill out, and get ready to go again. And now that that's done, I'm just going to pop him back roughly where he's supposed to be. Jump back into the queue and press save. And this one is called Copper Wire Collection. Save. There we go. And we'll do Q and we'll hide the paths. And there we go. That one is now all done and looking groovy. Right, well, after a fair bit of effort, it is now ready to switch the trucks on. So we're going to quickly jump into each one, enable autopilot, and then jump out. Jump into this one, enable autopilot, and jump out. Jump into this one, enable autopilot, and jump out. And there we go. Now, because I've got them all waiting 10 seconds, they should... Nope, they're going crazy. No, uh, what are you doing? Why aren't you going? What are you doing? Okay, that one's going. That one's going. And then that one should just follow them. Nope, you're going to stop and wait, aren't you? And then you're going to wait and you're going to... Oh, they're just like real drivers. Oh, my goodness me. Come on, guys. Sort it out. <laughs> I've just realized you're, you're taking nothing. Why haven't... What? Load. <laughs> so they're gonna do a, they're gonna do a whole lap before they're actually gonna take anything. Right. Fine. I'll sit here and wait then. Well, the trucks are on their way back, so that means that the system does work. Although I say that, I'm only seeing two trucks. Why am I only seeing two? Ah. Oh, is he there? Is he that far behind now? Okay. Right. So my trucks are back. So let's see. Does it work as expected? There we go, look. And yet we're seeing movement, that means that stuff is going in there. And we'll have a quick look in its bot bot while it's sitting. Yep, that's filling up nicely. Well, almost fill. I did 10 seconds, and that still wasn't enough. Right, so they're pulling away somewhat cautiously. And then the other one there is, is doing its thing. So, come to me, my jungle friends. <laughs> I don't know what it is, they just make me laugh. Anyway, right, so I now have them all connected. That is all of these connected up there and ready. Here come the first two trucks. I don't know why one of them's one of them's been super slow, but I'm sure eventually they'll all kind of find their way. Still no sign of him. All right, so he goes into that one. Of course he hits the wall. He should carry on and go to the next one. But look, I've done it again. I've done a Mark 1 lift. Like an absolute spanner over here. Right, and the copper's there. So, they should all be making their way up now. Yep, they're going to start coming there, which means that if we run back in here, obviously that's disconnected at the moment, but it will, it will happen again soon. But these three bins here, oh, it's all very exciting. Come on, come on. Who's going to be first? Place your bets. Stick a comment in now if you have time. You won't have time. I'm going to edit it so you don't have time. It was the cable, the cable one, that got hit first. And then we've got copper wire. And then I'm expecting the sheets to be quite a way behind, just because of 
Well, yeah. I'm hoping it will get here eventually. Yay, there it is. Sheets. One sheet. Cabal. Copper wire. So there we go. That is now up and running and coming into the main base. So this is great. This is small, but nice steps. I love it. And yeah, we can see there, that's everything that's going on there. And we'll have the concrete added back in there. I'll just get that done at some point. Not quite sure where I'm going to put it yet. Possibly going to build a little platform up there, actually. I need to close that. That's annoying. The one thing I did want to see, which I, I hadn't yet, was I built this very simple little gate. <laughs> and I wanted to know what it looked like when they came through it. But uh, here we go. We might be able to find out. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, let's delete all of that. Such an idiot. We'll try that. <laughs> There we go, that's better. I like that. That's cool. Right, next. Well, it is starting to come together a little bit now. Now, this should give you a kind of idea of the direction I'm going. It's, it's starting to look <laughs> like what we're, we're trying to do. Obviously over there's still the same, but I've done some tweaking. I've included the, um, the concrete now, so that's coming in. We've got loads of trucks using the truck stops. We've still got one spare at the moment. But I need to be actually doing what I'm supposed to be doing because I'm being too distracted by all this fun stuff over here. I keep forgetting what it is I'm supposed to be doing. And that was to unlock, not to unlock, um, to start making circuit boards. So I have created a little mini special factory down here. Again, this isn't one of those absolutely enormous, wow, that's amazing, there's so many machine things. But it's kind of cool, I think, because what we're doing it's because we had so much of this uh, heavy ore residue, and I'm only using it in this little system to make the fuel for the trucks, it's barely being touched. And then I discovered an alternate recipe. See, you can make uh, the circuit boards with rubber and this petroleum coke. Now, petroleum coke you can make using heavy ore residue. So, I have two foundries here. They're not foundries, they're refineries that are set up to make petroleum coke. And these will make 120 per minute. So that's 240 coming out of here. And then, if you follow me, I've got this new little stairwell. I've done a little sneaky area that is really low down. To be honest, I don't know how far down we can actually go before uh, it becomes a problem, but I'm going to keep trying, just with little rooms. But I've built this, which is six assemblers that are using that alternate recipe so they need 20 rubber each and 40 of the petroleum coke so with our 240 petroleum coke coming down here we can max out six of these which will give us a whopping 30 per minute yes i know that's not a huge number but it's something and it means that we can get circuit boards going into the system and it gave me a chance to play around with a different design setup i kind of made it so that everything is handled under the ground there because we've got so much downward space so we've got another level under here and that's all handled down there. It's all pretty straightforward. Kind of just need to connect it up, really, um, and power it on. It's pretty much ready to go. So we'll do that one and we'll do that one. That will add the rubber into the system. I'm stuck. And then we've just got to look at powering it all on. Yep, so our rubber is working. And for the rubber, I've just done another sneaky where I've just taken the extra feed under there and it feeds it round and just takes it straight down under I had a little window so you could see it moving past. I do like those. Every now and then I like a little window in the floor. Uh, anyway, so we need power. Where are we going to get power from? I don't actually know. <laughs> power is something I've still not really fixed up down here yet. Right, there we go. So that's working. So that should start chucking out that. Now it looks like that doesn't go anywhere, but it does. It goes under the ground and by the looks of it into a Mark 1 belt. Because <laughs> that's what I typically always end up doing. No, that's a three. No, I think it's actually fine. But yeah, no, they're working. Oh, here we go. Oh, they're on their way. They're going. Ah, we need to get to the storage bins. Stat. Because they should actually start appearing right here at any minute. Okay, I have been waiting for some time. They do have a long way to go, but I kind of would have expected it to arrive by now. I might have got something wrong somewhere. I hadn't. It was just 
patience <laughs> was all I needed. And the system's going to take a little while to sort of build up and and so on. But there we go. That's our first circuit board being made fully autonomously. Now we're getting 30 a minute. I was expecting a few more than that though. So we do need to go and double check that all machines are actually running. I'm not sure how long it will take to back it all up. Oh, but there, there we go. Look, we have got some coming in. Yeah, it's it's just the uh, the coal that needs to back up. It is all fine. It is all good. Yes, excellent. We are now starting to build some up. So that is good. That will just keep adding and building and we'll be all good. It'll also be going off into the cloud thanks to that. So we'll have access to them anywhere. But that will get that moving. Now at some point I will build something that creates tons. But that is absolutely perfect for now just to get us rolling. So let's take a quick jolly over to here and have a look at how much gear we need to get these running. So yeah, so I said, didn't I, before that I wanted a manufacturer in the system that is just making these. Again, for this stage, I don't need to be making thousands per minute or anything. I just want a few. But I've got to find somewhere to put my manufacturer or two and then take a couple of feeds. Where did I say about doing it before? Was it? It was down on this level here, I think. Yeah. So I might build something here just to be making some computers because I've got easy access to the rubber. Let me just remind myself what it was, what we need. Cables, rubber, and the circuit boards, right? So yeah, so circuit boards, cables, oh, plastic, not rubber. Okay. Well, I mean, we've got plenty of that over there. How can I discreetly take some of that? Hmm. Okay, I did some maths. <laughs> I did underestimate how many of these I do actually want. If I'm only making 30 per minute, one manufacturer uses 10. So if I'd built only three manufacturers to build computers, which make two a minute, I'd be using all of them. So I've just power sharded everything up and basically doubled it. So I'm now getting 60 per minute over there. I've managed to come up with a way to get... I say come up with a way, I mean, um, it's not exactly rocket science, is it? It's literally, I've just taken a feed off the main <laughs> line into uh, here. I now need to figure out how to get the cable, which of course is over there, so it shouldn't be too horrific. But then also I need to get those, or at least a split of them, over here. So that I can basically build three manufacturers and I will use half of what I'm making. But I need these. I need these cop oh, cable, which at the moment is going all the way over here, and then it goes up here. And of course it would be the middle one, wouldn't it? There's no way that could have possibly have been the outer one. There. It was a bit of a faff, and it's probably a, a worry about later problem. But I came up with that idea of just having them come all the way under the ground and just popping up there. But this will give us our three manufacturers, which, as I say, it's not about quantity at this stage. Don't get me wrong. It will be. But right now, I just need to get it so that things are ticking over. Let's have a little thinky here. So we're going to have something like three manufacturers like this. Now, fortunately, we're only having to put three things into them as well. So it's not like the, we have to worry too much about crazy belt work or anything like that. We'll just do it fairly simply for now. Thanks to the new straight mode, it's relatively straightforward. But let's build something nice and simple just to start us off. So the first one's going to be there. Next one's going to be... No, we were all too... We were a bit too close. A few moments later. Oh man, I forgot what a faff setting up manufacturers is. Oh wow, yeah. <laughs> that took me a minute. and It's just because it's been so long since I've done this. <laughs> So I've just put that together, nice and simple. We've just got to connect these up now, really. Okay, yeah, that's horrific. I'm gonna come back to that. I need to figure out a better way to do that, but I'm not gonna do it now. I'm just gonna get it working for the moment. <laughs> there we go. Hang on. Yep, we have got those going in. All right. Yep, and there is more of that beautiful animation that you get with Satisfactory. I mean, it's incredible like how good that is the little details and everything it's just yeah as someone that's done quite a lot of animation and so on in games this just makes me feel absolutely useless <laughs> amazing right so that's making that we just now need to feed that into oh where are we going to go ah oh, we need to go up that way 
Okay, I have the root. It is not pretty. It would probably give Josh from Let's Game It Out a bit of a run for his money. But we're going to go ahead and connect it all up. And that will get us, again, not a huge number, but some computers being made and being sent over to the bins. And yeah, it kind of goes up round there, round there, round there, round there, and then over that way. But it's fine, as long as they get there, that's all I'm worried about. But it does mean, in this bin here, next to the circuit boards, we will start to see computers. There they are, there they are, they're my first computers! Woohoo! Ah, there's something good about that. This is another one of those really lovely milestones that I just love. Like I say, it's not the biggest thing in the world, but it does mean that I now have a supply of computers so I can start unlocking... Well, no, I can unlock the, the signals, which was the last thing I needed to unlock. It'll take a little while for this to build up, but it's getting there, slowly but surely. Yeah, it is working. It's doing the job. So this is good. But what it means is we can come up here to the top, tippity top of our factory and we can go and do something we haven't done in a while. We can do a babouche. Milestone reached. Train signals placed on train rails can control and improve train behavior. This helps to avoid events where multiple trains attempt to occupy the same physical location. For information related to earlier train events, please refer to your employee non-disclosure agreement. <laughs> I do love those. I really do. So, that is everything. We've, we're, we've got to unlock the next tier. So that means we've got to start really concentrating on these guys. Now, the frames we can do, we have those over in our old, oldie factory. The modular engines need smart plates, motors, and... Ah, so, again, we've got smart plates over in the, in the other one. It needs two of those. So, for 500, we actually only need 1,000. I'm pretty sure we've got quite a lot more than that back home. So we'll find out about that. And then the adaptive control unit, that's where we've got the trouble. Because we've got plenty of the wiring units, that's fine. We've now got circuit boards, that's fine, although slow. Might have to come up with another solution for that, actually. We have computers, again, although slow. But we actually, when you do the maths on that, we only need 200. That's not really that bad. And that's the heavy modular frames. Now, it uses one, so we only need 500. But they're in batches of 50, so it's quite a lot, and they do take a lot of effort to build. So we need something making those. So that's going to have to be the next big project, is going to be building a proper heavy modular frame factory. And for that, we're going to need to scout a new location, which is going to be where that'll be, and then we'll have a train bringing the gear back. Now, in theory, if I can find somewhere over here, I need to check the map, I can't remember. But if we can find somewhere over here, we can have the train that is going to this one bring it back. And I'm thinking, now here's me thinking, if I also build a quartz and silica factory on the way, we can have that one train bringing back heavy modular frames, quartz. Actually, we need frames as well. Oh, no. So let's forget the quartz for now. So we need heavy modular frames, frames, and then probably something else. Plus, we still need to do something about our steel because we're not getting any steel back here at the main factory. That's all over here. We need to think about this quite a lot. I might need to start making my big round train track. Ah, there's so much to do. I know I always say that. I need to fix some of these uh, trucks now as well. Their waypoints are encroaching. Oh dear. Do you two mind uh, not doing that in front of me, please? I made a kind of entrance as well. I got fed up with it all just being open. I will start closing this all off soon. Um, I had this idea about tunnels down there as well for the train stations, but I don't know. There's still... There's still a lot to figure out here. Yeah. I'm just going to pop back over here and uh, remind myself of that one. <laughs> right. Well, you join me over here. Um, I'm actually up in the uh, northern area because I've decided I'm going to build the steel factory over here. But then I realized as I was kind of starting planning it and thinking about it, we're definitely going to start having fuel trouble. So I quickly nipped over here and threw this together. Now this is pretty simple, but to be honest, it's just a kind of spammed out thing for the moment just to get me going. Just to make sure that we don't have any trouble with uh, fuel. Not fuel. Electricity. So, what have we built? 
We're using uh, a couple of oil nodes that are down here. There's two impures and one normal. And they're all overclocked to max out. So we get basically uh, a full 600 Mark II pipe coming in to these 10 refineries. Which are just simply turning that into fuel. And then that fuel comes over here and goes off down here into this row of 34... Oh, it's loud down here. 34 fuel generators. Now, it's going to take a while to fully power up. It's going to take a little while to get to that fuel down here. And based on the maths, I think I've got one extra uh, generator than I actually need or that I can actually fuel. So I think it'll be all right. It should, it should run quite well, but it definitely will take a little while to get backed up. And down here at the end is just a little space. I'm going to build a battery tower. So there'll just be a big tower of batteries there, just for fun. Kind of can't really get the point of the batteries in this because if you build proper power stations, you don't really need them. But they're kind of cool. They look good. So it'll be quite fun having a big thing on the end there. And I'm going to build this into kind of some kind of glass building. It should look pretty groovy. But also, the uh, byproduct of this fuel is all of this polymer resin. So that's just getting sunk at the moment. But I could turn that into rubber or plastic if I need it. I may do at some point. We'll see. But I went with the design where everything's kind of kept underground. And here you can see this is what's going to become my battery bank. It'll be a big tower of these. It's quite expensive to build though. We'll see. It uses an awful lot of copper wire. So before I do it, I need to make sure I've got plenty in the inventory. Because in the cloud depot, it's just not that much. So yeah, so that covers our power requirements for some time. Because that setup has added an extra 5,000 megawatts. So you can see here, it's not very stable. It's fine, I don't really care. But yeah, we're up to 7,500. We're only using 3,500. So again, it's just pushed us over, keeping that limit away. Ideally, I should be doing a turbo fuel one. But there's no sulfur or coal directly around me so I'd have to ship it in from somewhere because to do turbo fuel we need them um, to create compacted coal which we need sulfur and coal which we're doing over in the other factory so it might be a case that we expand the other one thinking about it I've built these two the wrong way around haven't I I should have built a sole power generator over there and made this the the rubber and plastics factory but I've messed that up I didn't know it's fine we run with it it's all good, but we'll just head back over this way a little way because I'll show you what we're working on next. So, I have here four, I think they're all pure actually, iron nodes which are gonna fill belts up and bring them all the way back here. I finally started building some belt roads, I do like these. They're gonna bring them all the way back here and this is the blueprint, not blueprint, the, the block out for my steel factory. Ignore the train stuff, it's just where I was playing. But this up here, oh this is gonna be busy. This is going to be a huge building with all sorts going on. So we have a bunch of coal being brought up from down there. I do like that view. That does look kind of cool, right? We have limestone as well as all the iron. So we have everything we need to make steel plates, steel pipes, encased beams, and then heavy modular frames. And then just down here will be a train station that will take all of that back to the main base. And I've just started this blueprint here for what I'm gonna do for the foundries. Now we need, I've actually forgotten the number. It's either 40 or 24. I can't, <laughs> I can't remember now off the top of my head. Damn it. Oh well, we'll find out next time. Either way, this is the kind of, uh, the, the system that I'm gonna be putting down. I'm still trying to figure out exactly how best to, to manage it. Yeah, cause there's gonna be four of these with eight in each, that's it. So four of these with eight in each. Got a bit of Z fighting going on there. So yeah, that's 36. So I think, yeah, there's going to be 36. And that's just going to be doing the steel. Then we'll have something like five smelters that is doing our iron. Because we need to make a ton of screws for the heavy modular frames. And then we'll have a bunch of constructors turning that limestone into cement for the encased beams. So there's lots going on. And... I could probably find some alternate recipes, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to kind of stick with this one because I kind of know this. So I'm just going to go with it. In my last playthrough, this was exactly where I built the steel mill. And I made a really cool looking building. But I want to one-up it. I want to do one better with that really cool looking train station. It's all mapped out. But yeah, that's what we're going to be doing in the next episode. Ah, oh, it's exciting. Because then... We'll be able to start working on the next elevator parts and unlock the next section 
we're really not very far from it now. It's very, very cool. But I do hope you've enjoyed the video. I've really enjoyed myself in this one. I can't wait to carry on. This is so much fun. Really, really enjoying this playthrough. And if you did enjoy it, please remember, hit that like button. Also, subscribe if you're not already, and click the little bell if you want to get notified on new videos. Genuinely, pressing that like button means so much to me. And finally, a big shout out to all the viewers that are watching the videos at the moment. Honestly, I can't thank yous enough for the support that you're giving in this really enjoyable playthrough. So yeah, I'll just finish up then with thank you very much again, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.